I don't think the press had any idea of what it was like. What I thought was bad was a fraction of what it was. When I got here, I couldn't believe my eyes. That all the roads were impassable, all the trails were impassable. Giant trees uprooted and snapped off like, like matchsticks. And uh, it's something that, that we've never ever seen in our lifetime before. It was shocking and um, we immediately went and did our own survey of the forest and the damage and, and looked really closely at the whole park and for me the most amazing thing was that every single inch of the park was affected, it wasn't any one area. Stanley Park is recognized as an incredible park and people come here from all over the world and I think when the storm happened it drew attention to some global issues um, such as global warming and, and climate change and uh, the fact that severe storms are having effects all over and I think it kind of brought it home to people that, that this is kind of the effect that can happen. You know there are those purists who think that the forest should be the forest and it shouldn't be manipulated at all but we've already changed it from a human standpoint and the, the environmental art that, that uh, is going on is, I think, is, is a fantastic way of inviting people into the forest to not only see the art, but to, uh, to re-appreciate what the ecology of the forest is all about. It's really a new way, I think, of responding to the world that we're in. And it felt really important to create an opportunity for artists to get involved and to help express the significance of what had happened, the significance of kind of that sense of loss of an invulnerability of a place that felt so strong and so solid. I think everything that I personally do and probably most of the things that John does uh, are talk about a greater global issue. Uh, because it's pretty hard to escape no matter where you go now. I mean, there's the pine beetles, there's the, you know, the, the, the coming end of water and the, uh, you know, in, in southern climes and various places around the planet. Climate change, whatever, I mean, it's pretty common. It's got to be part of your psyche as you're working. It's always so hard to imagine something that you've never seen before. Hard to imagine something that exists you know, potentially quite far outside the boundaries of your definitions of things like art or, or ecology, that when there's an example, it makes it so much easier to start thinking about what you might want to do. And I think that's what this project can potentially provide. And even 10 years ago, you're fighting with people to kind of look at ways of reusing buildings and saving energy and sustainability. Now sustainability is you know, right off the top. Their expectation is now, well, can we get a silver or gold or a platinum lead building? I mean, they're really prepared to kind of spend the money and, and have understood that there is a necessity involved in how we inhabit buildings and the planet to be responsive. There's a real sense that many, many people have that we don't want to be introducing man-made things. We don't want to cover some natural space, some green space with cement. There's a real importance that artwork created in the park sit in it naturally as part of the park and not separate. I guess my first thought was I was a little, a little nervous about, you know, some kind of human impact, of course, in the forests of the park. But when I heard about the fact that it was an ephemeral art project, that made me a lot more comfortable because I knew that it wasn't going to be a permanent installation of a natural kind of material, but that it would be something that would go back into the forest over time. So that made me feel a lot better about it. One of the things that really attracted me to the project was that it was described as a collaborative opportunity. Uh, not only would we be collaborating with nature, but we would have the opportunity to collaborate with ecologists, foresters, park stewards, that all those relationships would inform the work. We came to be able to talk about the work and to adapt ideas and there were sites I was interested in that, that weren't feasible. They might have been safe for me to work in, but then uh, if people came to see the work, it would just have too much of an impact. Originally, well, personally, 
thought that it could have been kind of scary to deal with all these people that were involved in the project. And everybody had to put their bid in and... Uh, yeah, it can be intimidating That's talking right. to specialists. It could be that, like, is, am I going to be able to do anything, you know? And then, um, instead of being something that actually stifled the creativity, I personally saw it as, as you know, as something that, uh, I mean, every challenge was a new push towards creating solutions, and, and that's very exciting. So as well as helping to mitigate the kind of negative impacts, we were helping them to find ways that their project could actually enhance the environment. So there was things such as adding woody material, so that could be used um, by amphibians and rodents as, as nesting material or um, habitat, as well as fibrous material could be used by birds for building nests. So we, I tried to imagine ways that their artwork could actually benefit the environment as well there weren't actually as many boundaries as, as I might have been worried about because you, you know that you're working with sensitive areas. It's not just, for me, I'm thinking about cultural sensitive areas. The people that I'm working with were teaching me about environmentally sensitive areas. We felt as we looked at, at how we would choose the artists that we needed those visions. We needed the visions of the ecologists. We needed the understanding of the park that the park staff and park stewards brought to it. And we also needed to explore our ideas of what the park was, what this land was. And we needed to look at that from a whole variety of perspectives, especially including the First Nations perspective, the Coast Salish perspective. And we were looking for artists who also were shifting perspectives. And we, we need kind of a new way of approaching the world. In the end, it was having to figure out what group of artists would together be able to carry forward the project. I think now that, the, that nature has kind of taken over the, the final step in the project, I'm really interested to see how it will transform over time. And I think each artwork is, is an individual, so they'll all react differently to the, uh, the elements and uh, natural forces such as moss growing and plants uh, colonizing and animals using them. Um, so I'm really interested to, to revisit each one of the artworks and see over time how they change. I think they're, gonna, they're definitely going to age well and they'll look better over the years. Uh, looking at some of the conceptual ideas that the artists had, I had a, a very hard time visualizing these things out in a natural environment, let alone some of the, the materials that they wanted to incorporate into their designs. We had some very interesting requests as far as materials that they wanted to gather, um, but it, you know, in the end, it's, it's really quite interesting to see what the artists can take, which you know, we probably consider it just to be debris, and they turn into something beautiful. I, I have to admit, I was a little skeptical, yeah. But uh, they've sure proved me wrong, yeah. Somehow the idea of allowing a piece of art to die runs counter to our notion of what art is, which is why I think environmental art is revolutionary in that aspect. I think it brings people back into nature, which is, I think, what it, it's supposed to do exactly. And I feel like if we're quiet enough, we can absorb what's around us. And in that way, the land speaks to us. And maybe we absorb it and relate to it more with, um, with our heart and our spirit than our mind and our language capacity. It's about, um, about getting connected. Looks pretty good. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, think it's, uh, I think it's pretty strong and responsive and it's, uh, it's, uh, it, I think it's brought the peace into balance, you know, like I really think the, the space, the space works. No, I think it's very peaceful. That's my impression of it now, is that it's peaceful and everything's kind of back to where it should have been, maybe before we started.